got a hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, you got a hold to his hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, you've got to hold to his hand. To God's unchanging Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, today we gather in this place while there are tears in our eyes and our hearts may be heavy. We come to celebrate this life of Valerie Kerlock. We come to celebrate this mighty woman of God, this wife, mother, aunt, sister, friend. We come to celebrate not just who she was, but who she remains in our lives and in our spirits. Father, now God, right now we come on today thanking you for your presence and your power. Thanking you, Lord God, for the life of Valerie Kerlock. We're blessed, Father, that we were able to know her and be impacted by her. Now, God, we pray today that her life be celebrated in such a way that even in the midst of tears we can find joy because you blessed us to know Valerie. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. We're going to open up this service of celebration, singing the hymn of praise, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. If those except for the family would stand as we sing this hymn of praise, and even if your family and you want to stand, we're going to sing this out glorifying God today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Let's sing that chorus one more time all over this room. This is my story. This is my song. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior, praising my Savior all the day long. Can we just put our hands together and give God praise even today? We do have a reason to give God praise. And on today, as we go throughout this worship experience, sharing in this unique time, any other time we'd be gathered in the church and we would all be together celebrating Valerie's life. But today we have close family and friends who are here in this service, others who are watching by way of the World Wide Web, streaming in to celebrate Valerie's life. And so as we go forward in the service, it will follow as you see listed. The lessons from Holy Writ will come, the Old Testament from Deacon Ronald Chambers, New Testament from Deacon Robert Giss. The Prayer of Comfort will come from Elder Fred Powell. We'll have a musical offering and then the acknowledgments and condolences will be shared and I will come back up when we come time for the reflections to be shared. So everything will go forward as it is listed in the program.
I will be reading from the King James Version Bible, and I will be reading Proverbs 17, 21, 22, and 24. And it's read. It reads, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones, and a wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is, is before the, him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. May God have a blessing to a reading of his and hearing of his word. from John, the uh, third chapter, John, verses 14 through 18. And I'll be reading from the old King James Version. And it reads, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son unto the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just thank and praise God for this homegoing service. We're going to ask that with the exception of the family, for those that's in the audience to stand while we extend the prayer of comfort to the family. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, a day that you enabled and blessed us to see. We just thank the Lord Jesus for the life that Valerie Karloff has lived before our eyes, the Lord. We truly thank the Lord Jesus for the faithful service, the Lord, that she has rendered, the Lord. As we are offering and extending the prayer of comfort to the family, the Lord, of Valerie. Uh, remember, the Lord, her beloved husband, the Lord, Billy, the Lord. Remember all those brothers and sisters, the Lord that are here, dear Lord. My Lord, cherishing the times, the Lord, remembering the times, the Lord, that Valerie, the Lord, has had, the Lord, during her years of life on this earth, the Lord. But your word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, the Lord. We just thank the Lord Jesus for the family that's here, the Lord. Some traveled near and far, the Lord. We're praying, the Lord, that you will wipe away all the tears, the Lord, all the sorrows, the Lord, and that you will, the Lord, give them, my Lord, relief, the Lord, and joy and peace, the Lord, uh, during this uh, time of sorrow, the Lord, in this time of sadness, the Lord. We know you're able, the Lord, to do all things but fail, the Lord. We pray that the family, the Lord, will be strengthened, the Lord, will be unified, the Lord, and support one another, the Lord. Uh, we just cherish, the Lord, the memories, the Lord, of Valerie, the Lord. Uh, help those, the Lord. Help those, the Lord, that are struggling, the Lord. Give them peace, the Lord. Give them comfort, the Lord. Uh, God bless the family, the Lord. God bless
bless each and every one that's here. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I understand that our hearts are heavy and we're sad, but we come to praise the Lord because God is worthy to be praised. We all have to go this way one time, but we need to remember the life of Valerie. I don't mean to come up here and, and to take any uh, space from the pastor, but we can't sit here with a somber heart. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm here to do the acknowledgments and some of the condolences. Due to time constraints, I'm not able to read everything that has come through, but I will abbreviate the things that we have. Please accept our heartfelt condolences on the loss of your loved one. Words can't express how saddened we are to hear of your loss. Words cannot express how heartbroken I am for your loss. My deepest sympathies are with you at this difficult time, Phyllis Thomas. Grief can be so hard, but our special memories help us cope. Remembering you and your loved one today and always, Gary Humes, Jr. We have an acknowledgement from Jackie and Vince Hill. God bless you and your family. From Keith Harden, Dale William, your family, Valerie's sisters, brothers, and other family members and friends. I'm sorry to hear of your loss. My thoughts and prayers are with you in your time of grief. Please accept my condolences. We have an acknowledgement from the United Missionary Baptist Church, 1221 South 19th Street, Harrisburg, PA, 17104. Reverend Alvin Q. Taylor is the servant minister. To Brother Billy, Carolock and family, we, the United Baptist Church membership, were saddened to hear the passing of Sister Valerie Ann Carolock. She was a faithful and loyal member of God's church, and the church have lost a spiritual sister in the Christian community. Sister Valerie Ann Carolock loved, sacrificed, and admirably served the church in many and various capacities. Her commitment and devotion to the church never wavered as she faithfully carried out any task. Brother Carolock, you have lost your best friend. Sister Valerie Ann Carolock has gone home to be with Christ eternally. As a faithful Christian, she has gone home to receive the promise of Christ. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions there. Where I am, there ye shall be also. I go to prepare a place for you. As we grieve with you, Sister Valerie's departure, heaven is rejoicing at her arrival, for she has fought the good fight. She has kept the faith. She has finished the race. Now she will receive her crown of righteousness. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Therefore, individually and as a church family, we offer our deepest condolences to you in your loss of your wife, Sister Valerie. Brother Billy, we are praying that the Holy Comforter continue to undergird and to strengthen you. This is from the Central Baptist Association Layman's Movement to Brother William Carlock and the family of Valerie A. Carlock. The members of the Layman's Movement of the Central Baptist Association collectively offer our love, friendship, and deepest sympathy. God blesses us with fond memories of our community and friends and we are grateful for the intermingling of our churches and families that mold our collective spirit. We praise God for the years he allowed each of us to share Sister Valerie Ann Carlock, her life and her love, collectively offered by a few good men, the men of Central, Eugene Hampton, President. A letter of resolution. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. To Brother William Billy Carlock and family, with sorrowful hearts, the First Baptist Church of Stilton reaches out in love to extend our heartfelt, sincerest condolences to you, all family members and dear friends on the home going of your beloved one, Valerie Ann Carlock. Sister Carlock was a longtime member of this congregation. She was a faithful and loyal servant to First Baptist, and she leaves a void in our lives especially during Sunday morning worship services. 
Mrs. Karloff was a devoted member of the nurses' ministry. She was very dependable and always made herself available to serve. Sister Karloff will be truly missed but never forgotten. Even in sadness, your hearts can rejoice as you remember and give thanks to the Lord for the years he allowed you to enjoy, love, and share your life with Sister Karloff. We give thanks to our Savior, who has given us a gift of time to heal our broken hearts. Weeping may endure through the night, but Jesus, joy comes in the morning. As you celebrate the life of Sister Valerie Karloff, be comforted by the words of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace, I'd leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. May the perfect peace that the only, may the perfect peace that only he can give abide with each of you now and throughout the days ahead. May God bless each of you as we continue to hold your names up in prayer. Lovingly submitted the 6th day of January 2021, Reverend Walter S. Thomas, Jr., Pastor, Deacon Wayne Mosby, Chairman of the Deacon Ministry. A letter of resolution, Nurses Ministry, the First Baptist Church of Stilton, homegoing celebration for Nurse Valerie Harden Carlock. Dear Mr. Billy Carlock and family, the First Baptist Church of Stilton was deeply saddened to learn of the passing of your wife, Sister Valerie Carlock. Sister Carlock was a faithful member of the First Baptist Church of Stilton. She was a devoted member of the Nurses Ministry. She had a pleasant personality and was always ready and available to serve and assist other nurses and her church family. Nurse Valerie served for the last several years as treasurer of the nurses' ministry. She was very accurate and organized in her treasurer's bookkeeping. Sister Karloff was an inspiration to us all. We will cherish our memories of her and the time we shared with her. We thank God for allowing her to be part of our nurses' ministry. Although you feel great sorrow, remember Psalms 30 and 6. It reminds us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Be encouraged, for Sister Carlock has fought the good fight and received her heavenly reward. May you find comfort, hope, and strength in your memories and in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who deeply loves you. To God be the glory. With deepest sympathy, the nurses' ministry... Elaine M. Terrell, President, with Reverend Walter Thomas, Jr., Pastor. May the Lord continue to bless and keep each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. We thank all those who have shared thus far in this service of celebration of life of Sister Valerie. At this moment, we're getting ready to move um, to our time of reflections to be shared. But just before we do that, if you could take a quick moment and, and just turn to someone right next to you and share with them one thing that you remember about Sister Valerie, just for a few moments, come on, share one memory you have with those who are seated nearby you. That way, when we close out today, everybody can say they gave reflections on the day. Amen. That way we don't have to hear the whole story, but we get to hear part of the story. The family has asked for those who are coming to share, if you would please keep reflections to two minutes. And again, I would reiterate two minutes um, as there is an appointment that has to be made for the interment at the Indian Town Gap National Cemetery. So for those who are coming to share reflections, again, if you could share for two minutes and then after you have done, if you would wipe down the microphone for the next person to come and share their reflections today of Sister Valerie Kayla.
already start off with my salutation. The fruit of the spirit to everyone. Uh, Valerie fought a good fight. She was sick for at least the last eight, nine months. And she lost a lot of weight. And she really suffered. Uh, thank you all for, for coming today. And I know we've been made door for the night, but, but joy does come in the morning. The fruit of the spirit to all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Valerie's sister. My name is Sharon. And I just wanted to stand here today and share something with you. In spite of Valerie going through everything that she went through with her um, lung transplants and everything, Valerie never lost the faith. You know, she kept her faith going and everything. And um, Valerie was always a cheerful person. So in, when her and Billy got married, Billy had called me and he said, I'm going to marry Valerie. And and everything so she was really happy about it so all we can say is the good things about Valerie there, I, I don't have anything there's nothing bad I can say anyway but I just want to say um, in spite of it all in spite of everything she kept the faith the Curlow family and to the families and friends of Valerie, I offer you my condolences. The word of the Lord tell us that man is born of a woman is of a few days. That this is not our home, but we're just passing through. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. We have a home with the Lord Jesus Christ. But as so many times I've, through this year, I have, uh, through last year, I counted 30 people that have passed away. And Valerie was the 30th one. And it, I am so glad that Jesus came that we may have life and that we may have it abundantly. But so many people pass through this life without knowing Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. It behooves us to seek the Lord while he may be found, for tomorrow is not promised unto us. Don't take it lightly. Your time is coming. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have no hope. But I thank God for the life of Valerie. And I pray your strength in the Lord from this day forth. second to the oldest sister. I'm not a speaker, but I do want to say thank you everyone for coming. I didn't spend much time with her 
for being on the road a lot, but when we did get together, we enjoyed each other's company. Whenever Valerie called me, we talked for hours upon hours. We laughed, we talked. Just like any other sisters, we had our ups and downs. <laughs> we get mad at each other. We hang up the phone. A few minutes later, we call call back. Oh, I'm sorry. But still, we got over it. I'm going to miss her. Although... I'm going to miss her. I love her. I love each and one of my sisters. And I don't know what to say. I love my family. And I hope this is not the last time I see each and every one of you. And please pick up the phone. Even if it's just to say hi, reach out and touch. Keep in touch, please. I love you all. Greetings, family. Uh, let's pick our heads up. Uh, God is good. He can do everything but fail. You know, it's this uh, look to the hill for what's coming for help. I want to share a song with my, this my, this my, this my sweetheart, right? It's my special sister, too. You know? I mean, they're all special to me. But um, her and Terry, they used to beat me up all the time, you know. So <laughs> I call myself in a fight. They going to help me. They beat the people up and then beat me up. I said, oh, my goodness. What's going on here? So what I want to do is try to share this song. I hope I can do it. Well, there was a woman in the Bible days. She had been sick, sick so very long. And till she heard about Jesus was passing by. So she joined the gathering throng. While she was pushing, pushing her way through, someone asked her, what are you trying to do? She said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be made whole. Yes, I will. Whoa, oh, she spent her money here and there till she had no more, no more money to spare. The doctors, they did all they could, but their medicine did no good. When she touched him, the Savior didn't see, but yet he turned around and cried, Somebody touched me. Valerie said, it was I who touched the hem of your garment, and I know that I'm made whole. Yes, I am. Thank you, family. Amen. We thank you again for all those who have shared your reflections on today. Again, going back to our program, we will proceed as you see listed ahead. The reading of the obituary by Evangelist Chambers, followed by a musical offering. Then the eulogy will be shared as we prepare to make our way to the interment on today. The obituary. Valerie Ann Carlock, daughter of the late Constance L. Hardin, and the late Arthur Neal was born on Saturday, May 16, 1959, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. She received her formal education in the Harrisburg School District and was a graduate of Harrisburg High School with the class of 1977. Valerie worked at the Harrisburg Hospital before going to Job Corps. After her completion of the Job Corps, she moved to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and worked in various capacities while living there. Unfortunately, a major illness, a lung transplant, 
ended her working career. Life expectancy for a lung transplant was around 10 years. Being a true fighter, Valerie was able to fight back against her disability, having a desire to further her education. She enrolled in Phoenix University and received her associate's degree in business management. Valerie never had children of her own, but helped rear two of her brothers, Joe's children. She was proud of her role as a mother aunt. While living in Williamsport, Valley Faith, Valerie faithfully drove down to Harrisburg to take her mother shopping. On one of those trips, she met her future husband, William Billy Carlock. On February 27, 2015, they were united in holy matrimony. After her marriage, she joined the First Baptist Church of Stilton under the leadership of Pastor Walter S. Thomas. Not only joining the church, she decided to become a member of the nurses' ministry. She was later installed as the treasurer of that ministry. Nursing was her passion, and she did so in her youth. Although being plagued with a disability and having to take a number of anti-rejection medications, Valerie found, Valerie found a position in the transportation field at Harrisburg Area Community College, shuttling students from one campus to another. She was a dedicated employee. Valerie, Valerie was always a kind, outgoing person and didn't fail to give the young students advice. She worked until the COVID-19 virus caused the ultimate shutdown of the campus. In the community, Valerie was an active member for the past three years as a commissioner for the City of Harrisburg Human Relations Commission. She also was a member of Ephraim Slaughter American Legion Post 733, Ladies Auxiliary, but because of her disability, she wasn't able to attend the meetings. Valerie N. Carlock, at the age of 61 years, seven months, and 13 days, transitioned from this life on Monday, December the 28th, 2020, at Holy Spirit Hospital in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. She leaves to celebrate her life, her husband, William Billy Carlock, her stepsons, Cornell and Joseph Carlock, her brothers, Terry, William, and Joe Harden. Her sisters, Connie Gunning, Jean Janine Harden-Pate, May Harden, Naomi Johnson, and Deborah Kamak. Her brother, Keith Neal. Her sisters, Marguerite Jean Neal, Barbara, Barbara Bledsoe, Sharon Neal, Bonnie Davis, Terry Crossan, and Barbara Ann Rice. Her uncle, Eugene Harden, and a host of other relatives and friends. We know all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. When we fulfill God's purpose, he takes us into his arms and takes us unto his eternal kingdom. Free at last, home at last, ever to rejoice. Letter from heaven. When tomorrow starts without me and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. When tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here 
there in your heart. Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. I will be okay. Heaven is my home now, and this is where I'll stay. Don't cry for me. It was just my time. But I will see you someday on the other side. Don't cry for me. I am not alone. The angels are with me to welcome me home. Don't cry for me, for I have no fear. All my pain is gone, and Jesus took my tears. Don't cry for me. This is not the end. I'll be waiting here for you when we meet again. Family acknowledge our heartfelt thanks are extended to all who help to ease our heavy burden that we share. All kindnesses have sustained us and brought us joy and all else the knowledge the true caring friends are always within reach. May God's grace and richest blessings be with you always. A special thanks to Francinius Dialysis Center and the ICU unit at the Holy Spirit Hospital and special friend, Mary Babald. Precious memories How They linger The stillness of the midnight Scenes unfold Jesus with 
whispered in my ear. He said, Chona, I said, Chona, I will be with you. Oh, yes, he did. Sacred, I said, sacred, sacred secrets, they will unfold. memories how how they linger So memories of Sister Valerie Kaylock. Today I do come to share a few kind words in this eulogy, but before even that, I do want to make sure to officially, as Valerie's pastor, send words of condolence and prayers from our church family at First Baptist Church of Steelton, where we love Sister Valerie so much. And Brother Billy, you know how much we love you and your family. You all have been a part of my life at First Baptist the past five years, but even going beyond that, the part of the ministry of First Baptist in a major way, and we are truly going to miss Sister Valerie. We're praying for and with you and the entire Carelock family. Today, I just want to share a few brief words as we prepare to say farewell to the earthly body of Sister Valerie, but we know that her spirit is alive and well, and we know that to be absent in the body is be present with the Lord. There's a scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse number 18. It just simply says, Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon festival, and you will be missed because your seat will be empty. If I'm to put a name or a title on this message, these few moments, words to be shared, I would simply talk about from this topic, a life worth remembering. A life worth remembering. My brothers and sisters, life presents us with memorable moments as well as ones that we'd rather forget. We have memorable moments where we celebrate family and friends, birthdays, anniversaries, moments of achievement, moments of celebration. But then we also have moments that we would rather forget, whether it was one of a letdown, disappointment, maybe even an embarrassment. We have memorable ones and ones that we'd rather not dwell on or reflect upon. Truth of the matter is, I know I've got at least one or two folk in here who can think back over some things 
that if you could, you would erase them from your memory banks, never to have to revisit them again. But that's not just the case with moments in life, but it's also the case with people. Amen, lights. I know we're sitting in a service of celebration of life, and we're keeping the tears held back and keeping ourselves together. But let's be honest this morning. There are some people in our lives that we would care to forget. If I, if I got a witness, don't say amen too loud because I don't know who you're sitting beside. Don't even nudge your neighbor. Just give me a wink if you know that you know some folk. If you could, you would erase them from your memory banks. Some folk who we have met, we wish we had not wasted the time to have spent those moments of our life that we would never get back. There are some who we'd rather forget, but then we are blessed in life to have moments or rather have people that God sends our way that have blessed us in such a way that they are memorable. They are people who we are grateful that we have encountered, grateful that we have come face to face with them, grateful that we've had the chance to be in their presence. And I want to suggest to you today that Valerie Kerlock was one of those people. That she was one of the ones that we do and we should remember. If I've got a witness, just say amen. If I've got a witness, just say amen. Come on now, y'all. We came to celebrate Valerie's life today. I, I, I believe, Brother Billy, that she is one worth remembering. Which raises the question, what is it about her life that makes it memorable? And what is it that we can glean from her, Mario, that will help us see and help us model a memorable life? I think one of the worst things that can be done is to live and nobody miss you when you're gone. One of the worst things can be to live on this thing we call earth and experience life and not have an impact on anybody. But the fact that we sit here today with tears in our eyes and brokenness in our hearts is because she had an impact on somebody. Something from Valerie's life, I believe, we can glean on today to help us live our lives a little bit better going forward. What, what makes her life memorable and what helps make a life memorable is when you support with presence. Not P-R-E-S-E-N-T, but P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. She supported with presence. Well, what, I, what I've learned, Brother Billy, in my years of living is that some folk will speak it but never show it. They will talk about how they support you, talk about how they are there for you, talk about how they have your back, how they are ride or die. But when it comes time for the rubber to meet the road, they will never show up. Sister Valerie was one who was supportive, but she supported with her presence. She was there for somebody other than herself. And if you don't get anything else today from this eulogy, get this. You can't just live life for you. God did not just call us to be about me, myself, and I, but God called us so that we could be there for somebody else. I feel like having a little church this morning. Y'all forgive me. I've been preaching in front of a camera for about nine months, so it's good to be in front of people. Uh, she was supportive with her presence. At First Baptist, one of the things I, I, I often tell folk when we come to moments like this is as a pastor, most members have an, an unofficial assigned seat. They have that same place where they go to when the doors of the church open, where they go and they reside for worship services. And Brother Billy and Sister Valerie would often be seated for different services over to my right in the rear of the church. The church calls it the overflow section. But they'd sit back there. If Brother Billy wasn't ushering, he was sitting over there with Sister Valerie because, you know, most Sundays he on the door. And he cutting the step when it's time to march around the church. Oh, some of y'all have seen Billy cut that step. Brother Billy, let me just digress for one moment. I had to go back and look through my old pictures and everything, and I found a video of you marching down the center aisle. I was going to send it to you, but I said I'll wait till later. But, but they'll be seated right over here on the side, but not just for Sunday morning stuff. But if it was a weeknight service, coming out for revival, taking part in, in, in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ministry fair we had, not just there on Sunday morning when everybody else was there, but supporting the activities of the church. She said, I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to be about this thing. I'm, I'm going to support not just with my with slip service, but I'm going to show up when somebody needs me. And somebody in here knows today the reason why your heart is heavy is because she was there for you. She showed up for you. 
She was present for you. And that's what makes her life rememberable because she supported with her presence, being there for somebody other than herself. But not only is she memorable because she supports with presence, but she's also memorable. And what makes a life memorable is when it's one who is tenacious by example, tenacious by example. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, rather, and we began to hear and get reports of Sister Valerie's passing. And, you know, when somebody passes, then all the saints start saying everything, all the, all the platitudes and all the struggles that you didn't know they had while they were living. And I, I did not know, Brother Billy, about the full, the, the, the lung transplant that she had to go through until after she passed. Somebody just missed the message in that. I didn't know about the disabilities until after she passed. I didn't know about the struggle until after she passed because she didn't put her illnesses or her disabilities on display. Somebody's missing it. She, some folk, they get a headache and everybody in their life knows about it. Oh, y'all know about two or three of them people. They get a hangnail and they on social media and then text the whole family. Y'all, I can't make it to work today. My big toe is aching. Sister Valerie fought through whatever she was going through to not just be supportive, but to also lead by example that if I can go through what I'm going through and still be there, then there ought not be anything you have to deal with that can stop you. She lived with her disabilities, but get this, not with deficiencies. Good God Almighty, I feel like having church in a funeral home. She had disability, Brother Billy, but not deficiency. To taking on uh, opportunities and taking on job assignments later on and, and with the disability, as the obituary says. Why? Because she was tenacious by example. I love the song the brother sang when he got up here a few minutes ago talking about the woman with the issue of blood because it reminded me of Sister Valerie. For those who do not know that story, the woman has the issue of blood. She's been sick for about 12 years. Jesus shows up. There's a crowd surrounding him, and she pushes through the crowd to make her way to Jesus. One who was ostracized by society decides that she's not going to allow anything to get in her way to stop her to getting what she needs from Jesus. And Sister Valerie was one who was not going to allow anything to stop her, anything to get in her way. She was tenacious by example. She learned how to fight the good fight of the faith, how to press on when she didn't feel like it, how to make her way through. Tenacity by example makes her life memorable. But, but lastly, and I'll get out your way, we got to make our appointment on time. She, she makes her life as memorable. And what makes her life memorable is she supports with her presence. She's tenacious by example. But here's the last thing we can take from Sister Valerie's life from today. I know there's so much more, and you'll share it in times of gathering at a later moment in time. But here's the last thing I want to share today. She loved with action. She loved with action. Brother Billy, I know you said it earlier, and we all who know you, we know that you love the fruit of the Spirit. And one of those is love. She modeled what love looks like. At First Baptist, our, our, one of our pillars, the first pillar of our mission is to display love. And Sister Valerie lived her life loving with action. And what I have found, church, is that when God has loved you, you don't mind sharing that love with somebody else. Well, when God has shown himself mighty and strong in your life, you don't mind sharing that with somebody else. She displayed her love with action. I love reading about the role she plays as mother aunt, helping to rear children who are not her own. Why? Because she had love to share with somebody else. And somebody in here today, if you've ever experienced any a bit of love in your life, especially the love of God, I encourage you, do not hoard it for yourself, but share that love with somebody else especially in the day and age in which we are living right now, in the midst of this global pandemic, coronavirus, corona, COVID-19 running wild and rampant, we do not know the next time that we will see somebody, whether it be on this side or the other side of glory. Do not let a moment pass you by when you can show somebody just how much you love them. 
Sister Valerie modeled love with action, serving people, serving as a nurse at First Baptist, being a shuttle driver at Hack, living her life, making the words of the song true. If I can help somebody as I pass along, my living will not be in vain. She showed us what the love of God looks like. She had a life that was worth remembering. And I'm encouraging you today to remember her life, to, to hold on to the memories. We, we are given the blessed blessing, blessing from God of memory. Sometimes it can seem as though the memories hurt, that the memories can bring up feelings that drive us to ask God why. But the memories are a gift from God because we were blessed to have those moments that lead to the memories. But it's also now what we can carry to help carry her legacy on. And so I encourage you, family and friends, those watching by way of the World Wide Web, to take the legacy of Valerie Carlock, to take whom she was to you, what makes her life memorable, and to carry on her legacy, supporting with presence, being tenacious by example, and loving with your actions, not just in word, but also in deed. I want everybody in this room to stand right where you are as the music is played softly. We prepare for the final farewell of Sister Valerie Carlock on this side. But for those of us who know the Lord, for those of us who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, for those of us who have professed him as our Lord and Savior, we know this is not the last time we will see her. For we will one day see her again. And as the church folks say, the sweet by and by in the presence of almighty God. And there we shall stand in the presence of our God in the glory of his majesty, crowning him king of kings and lord of lords and celebrating the great things he has done. Father, now God, we come today. We come today, Lord God, even in the midst of this moment with thanksgiving. We are thankful for Valerie Carlock. Father, we are thankful that we were blessed to be one of the ones who encountered her in this journey called life. We are thankful for this woman of faith who was a blessing to us, who will be missed because she lived a memorable life. Father, we thank you that her memory will not just fade away, but that it shall stay alive in our hearts, in our spirits, and in our minds. Father, I pray today for this family and friends who gather in this place and those who gather through the stream. I pray that you might remain and show them that you are the God of all comfort, who shall comfort them in their time of need. Father, I pray that you might give them a strength and a peace right now that passeth all understanding. I pray that you might show yourself mighty and strong in their life in the coming days and weeks ahead. And Father, I pray that in those moments where the phone calls begin to be few and the visits, socially distanced as they may be, become sparing, that you might make your presence known in their midst so that they remind, are reminded you'll never leave them nor forsake them. And Father, as we know Valerie is your child and you have received her unto yourself, Father, our prayer is that the life she lived on this side, matter of fact, not our prayer, but our testimony today is that that life was not in vain, but the life she lived blessed others because she was faithful to her God. And now, Father, you have rewarded her faithfulness by calling her back home to you. So today we simply say, see you later, Sister Valerie, for we will one day see her again. So, Father, we thank you again. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. At this time, we're preparing for the service of interment and the committal to be held at the Indian Town Gap National Cemetery. Those from the major Winhill Funeral Home are going to give us further direction. 
at this time. I'm going to ask if one of the representatives would come forward to give direction as how we will proceed with the remainder of today's celebration, as well as directions for our pallbearers. If you would remain standing, remain standing right where you are as we receive further direction for Reverend T. Paul Bears, would you all come forward now? <clears throat> 